parts to this video. The first part is why, the second part is what, the third is how. So to start off with, why do we care about a layer 7 load balancer? How is an ingress controller an abstraction above that load balancer and what role does it play? So in part two we talk about the what, what does it look like, what is a ingress controller, what's it trying to do for us? And finally, how the most important part, how do we build this out? What do the steps look like? How would you repeat what I do to create your own ingress controller? Okay, let's get into the why component of this video. So simply put, a Kubernetes ingress controller is an abstraction over a layer 7 load balancer. It dramatically simplifies the way we interact with the load balancer. We can set up some rules that define the way traffic is routed across the services in our cluster. And what we'll show you today will be easily extensible so that you can point to any service through various URLs. Another use case we'll demonstrate here is how you can do SSL termination with this ingress controller, meaning that traffic comes across encrypted and it hits our cluster and at one single endpoint inside the ingress controller we can decrypt it, kind of offloading the processing of decryption for the entire cluster. Other capabilities that are available inside the Nginx Kubernetes ingress controller is name-based virtual hosting. We won't give you very concrete examples here, but again, the example is extensible. Now to be clear about the why, one of the main values here is the fact that we're operating at layer 7. We're not operating at layer 4 or 3, which are typically lower level load balancers. Layer 7 offers you the ability to route traffic based on the actual content of the message. This means that if you notice there's an image or some other type of traffic, you can reroute that request to a server optimized for delivery of that content type. And so there's a bunch more reading here you can do at the Nginx website. Nginx, of course, is going to be the controller that we use with Ingress to help us execute our Ingress controller. So what you're looking at here is our cluster. You'll notice here we have a couple of pods, P1 and P2. We have two services, S1 and S2. And then we have URLs that get routed to each one of those respective services. So if the user went to foobar, foo.bar.com slash foo, they would go hit S1. If they went to foo.bar.com slash bar, they would hit S2. How is that all possible? Well, if you look over here, we have an ingress controller definition that routes us based on the URL. So you'll notice here a set of rules. You'll notice that the host says foo.bar.com. And of course, the path slash foo routes to service S1. And the path slash bar routes to the service name S2. Now, ours will be slightly different, of course, because we have another sample application. This is just a simple way for you to think about it. And so as we move through this example, this is really the pattern that we're trying to implement, the fan out pattern where a number of URLs map to services. In our case, we're just going to map to the website, but again, it's extensible, so you could do something like this. Also notice you could maybe add additional hosts as well. For example, not just foobar.com, you could do other hosts inside your Kubernetes cluster. Let's be clear about what we're going to build. We will build a Kubernetes cluster that includes an ingress controller. That ingress controller will implement a fan out pattern like the one we just described. At the same time, we will leverage TLS certificates to provide safe HTTPS access to the cluster. And we will work with Nginx to help implement this fan out pattern. So the Ingress controller will work hand in hand with the Nginx components. I'll provide you an example here where you can go learn more. Much of what you see was based on that, although I would argue it was a little bit incomplete. The example we're going over here covers more bases. So if you had to list out all the technologies, it's Kubernetes Ingress, Nginx, TLS certificates with X509, and the fan out pattern. So let's take a look at our cluster here. Notice we have a web service that points to our actual Python web application pod. And then that pod in turn turns to our MySQL service, which in turn points to a MySQL pod. So the question at this point is, what are the files that make this up? You'll also notice in the lower right corner the Nginx ingress controller along with the Kubernetes ingress definition file. So the next step here is to map out all the YAML files or all the manifest files that make up the cluster. 
Eventually, we'll execute a shell script with provisions at all, but it's all going to be based on these manifest files. We're going to concern ourselves here with all the files at this point. Let's start with the replication controller for the web front end, that is the Python web app. It essentially has two containers running inside that pod, the Python Flask web app, along with the Redis cache. The second file is the web front end service definition file, the manifest file that defines the um, web service. Fairly straightforward. We'll take a look at that later, but again, it's explained in that previous video I discussed. The third file is the replication controller for the MySQL database, and it only has one container for the MySQL database. The other very straightforward file is the manifest or resource YAML file for the MySQL service. It's simply a service that points to our pod here for MySQL. The next two files, the TLS key and the TLS cert, represent the X509 certificate as well as the private key. These files are used in the cluster to decrypt traffic coming across SSL with any HTTPS request. These are likely to be stored in the Ingress controller. The next file that we're going to look at is the Nginx Ingress RC YAML file. This is the replication controller that represents the Nginx product used to help our Kubernetes Ingress do the fan out pattern. And finally, the web Ingress YAML file. That's in fact the definition of a Kubernetes Ingress controller. And it's in that file that we're going to define our paths for routing purposes as we described previously. Okay, this next section is going to be some fairly standard kubectl commands. These are the commands that actually provision our cluster based on these manifest files. So let's walk one by one through the important ones here to see how they map out in our cluster. At the very end, I'm going to give you the GitHub repo, which gives you every detail of every file here so that you can repeat these steps. But let's just quickly go through this to see how each one of these manifest files maps to a component inside of our Kubernetes cluster. The first file here is our tls.key and tls.cert file that get used in this kubectl create secret command. This secret will be used in our ingress controller file to basically decrypt HTTPS traffic for the domain turkly.com. You can see I have that file being stored in the ingress controller. Here for number two, this is the previously described replication controller. This is the image produced by Nginx that we're going to use here in our cluster. Three is the pretty big deployment for both the MySQL and the web replication controllers and services that we discussed previously. So these four commands, these four kubectl commands, provision all the pods for the web services, the Redis cache, and the MySQL database, along with the corresponding services. Number four, this is essentially creating the ingress controller, which does the mapping for routes to specific services, which in our case is only going to be the web service. And that's why you see number four there with the ingress controller. Number five is where we actually expose an external endpoint. What this basically does in Azure is it will provision a layer four load balancer with a public IP address that is routable. So what we're going to do later is we're going to be able to go to GoDaddy and set my A record to this newly provisioned public IP address. Once we do that, we'll be able to direct traffic to the cluster using HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash turkly.com. Finally, we get to the how. So now we're going to go to the command prompt and actually run those deployment scripts that we just studied so closely. And at that point, we'll actually be able to see this cluster up and running, routing traffic appropriately. So here we are at the command prompt. Let's look at these ingress files real quickly just to verify what we've been talking about. So again, we're going to look at the ingress controllers, web-ingress and nginx-ingress-rc. Let's look at the replication controller first. No surprise here, this is a replication controller. And you'll notice also the that on here on line number 17, we're just going to download this image and run it as a container. So it's that simple to use Nginx. We're doing some port routing there, port 80. 443, of course, is important since that is the um, SSL port for secure traffic. So let's take a look at the web-ingress.yaml. And this is where we set up the paths. This is where we route things like forward slash health C to a specific service. So again, this is an ingress controller. And this is for the host turkly.com, which is how I've mapped my certificate. 
and basically we define the paths here that map to services. I've only got one host here, but I could do multiple hosts here and multiple paths. I kept things simple. I'm routing here the standard entry point to our Python Flask web application. And as you can see, slash init, that will initialize the database. We'll also be able to add courses here on line 30. And we'll also be able to query courses here on line 34. But again, they're all pointing to the same service, but we could change that. We could route to different services here. One of the things you might be wondering at this point is how do these actual routes work? How do they relate to my actual Flask web app? That's what we're going to find out next. So let's get into some details here. Let's take a quick peek at app.py again from a previous video. What we're looking for here is those entry points. So when we route those paths, how are they getting translated into the running app application, the web flask? So you can see here the endpoints, health Z, health ZDB. Those are endpoints that we execute from our URL request to actually run code in our web app. So there's slash init. It goes ahead and initializes the database. We've got slash courses add, which does an insert with a post of data. We'll be looking at these commands in a moment to actually affect the insertion of data. If we look here in line 66, we've got the query. So you say slash courses UID, you pass in the ID for the courses you want return, and then a lookup takes place here in the lines here. Again, reference in a previous video, it leverages Redis cache as needed. But what we're looking at here is when you route those requests to our web services, what is the actual Python code executed? So what we're looking at here is the actual deploy app.sh command. We reviewed that earlier. It's basically all the kubectl commands to create the secret, the ingress controller, the services for the web app and for the database, as well as for the pods. We create the ingress controller here and so on. So this is a big important file for all those steps. So now we get to the important work of actually running this script and provisioning our cluster. So I'm going to go ahead and run this script we just looked at, and you can see all the commands taking place. Let's quickly review what was created here. So we've got pods, we've got services, we've got replication controllers, we've got secrets, and we've got ingress controllers here. So let's do a basic command here, uh, cube cuddle get all, and it will break things down to, for us really nicely here. So let's go ahead and execute cube cuddle get all, and let's start off at the top here. You'll notice we've got some pods. No surprises here. We have the MySQL pod, as well as the um, Nginx pods. Just a bunch of pods basically spitting off our replication controller and our services as well. But we are pending the load balancer public IP address. There's our replication controllers. There's our um, secret. Actually, that's our ingress controller, in fact, there that I've got highlighted. And then finally, um, let's go ahead and do some actual record insertion. OK, so let's do a few commands and see if we've provisioned the IP address for the external load balancer, the layer 4 sitting out there in Azure. The kubectl get all won't give us that, but I have a shell script I'm including, again, downloadable here in a moment. Let's go ahead and run that. And we do, in fact, see 13.91.59.135. That is the public facing external IP address that we can hit. So now I'm going to go to GoDaddy. And what I want to do here is actually enter into my A record for my domain, turkley.com. What I would like to enter is that IP address that we just saw. So I'm going to go here and manage my domain at turkley.com. Here at godaddy.com, I'll say manage DNS. And if I scroll down, I'll see the A record here. I'll click the edit and then paste in that public facing layer 4 load balancer IP address. But it won't immediately provision. I'll have to wait. Let's try the NS lookup command to see if yet it has rendered the new IP address and see if we get the third. We do not. So we have a ways to go here before we actually have a public IP address that's routable. So we'll come back and rerun that NS lookup command in just a moment. OK, so this is where the rubber meets the road. Let's go ahead and now do an NS lookup. Sure enough, that 13 address showed up. That means that address is routable for turkley.com. Let's go ahead now and look at that init shell script that's going to essentially call into our pod, into our web flask application, 
and call the init endpoint you saw that we were routing. So that init endpoint essentially says create the database. Let's go ahead and run it. Sure enough, the correct message came back. Let's take a look at adding records now with the add.sh. Notice another curl command. We invoke our certificate. We need to use our certificate to do this HTTPS curl command. We're going to do a post and we're going to insert some data here. It's going to have a UID of 1, a course number of 401, a course title of Kubernetes. Notes will be basically an orchestrator. And then, of course, we'll hit the HTTPS endpoint, turkley.com slash courses slash add. We'll do that two more times with two more records. So it looks like add.sh is good to go. Let's go ahead, hit the bash script. Sure enough, we got a bunch of 200s. Looks like the add worked. Let's now query that data that we've just added. I'll go ahead, once again, do a curl command, again with the certificate, and we're going to pass in the UIDs of 1, 2, and 3. So we're going to re-retrieve all three records. Let's go ahead and issue. Sure enough, all three records came back. It looks like we were successful at all of our operations at this point. So as a final step of good measure, let's go to a URL here using HTTPS, of course, and try to request all three courses. So that's a big success. This is the whole point here is HTTP access using an ingress controller in Kubernetes. So we're pretty happy about that. It looks like it works.